Hi folks, it's Andy and welcome to today's Kendo analysis video. Um, today I'm going to be having a look at a grading video. Um, in case you're new to this series, basically what I do is I take you through uh, my journey in a way um, with my own sort of Mitori Geiko videos that I found basically on YouTube. Um, and what I'm looking at when I'm looking at um, the sort of contents of them uh, and kind of an analyze them a bit um, and talk about you know, points to pick up on. Um, I'm taking a little bit, little bit of a different approach today, though, um, because I'm looking at a grading video uh, for fourth dan, and I thought it'd be something that'd be interesting for the community as a whole because it's something I get asked about a lot. How do I pass fourth dan exam? Um, and this is a really great video from um, a Japanese YouTuber. Their account is down here, Kendo Marty, um, and. Uh, it says essentially that this is a, a video from uh, 2012 um, and it's uh, this person was 39 uh, years old uh, at the time of recording. OK, so it's not like a, you know, a, a young university student that's just, you know, taking the fourth down. This is a, a regular person um, sort of whilst doing everyday life, also doing Kendall. Um, so I thought it would be a particularly interesting one to share with you and, and talk about um, my points of view as to why I think that uh, this particular candidate was successful in his grading. Uh, and it also says that his opponents were unsuccessful. So maybe we can look at that as well. Uh, before we get stuck into it, though, don't forget, um, if you like the videos that I put out, don't forget to shop at Kendall Star. Uh, <laughs> that's my website uh, for Kendo equipment. It's amazing Kendo equipment, best reviewed on the internet by far. So go and check it out. Uh, and that supports me putting these videos out. So uh, definitely go over to kendostar.com. Um, so let's get stuck in. <clears throat> so it's this candidate here on the right uh, is our successful candidate and the video uploader. So his first uh, partner is uh, female. Okay, so he immediately begins with a men's strike, uh, which doesn't quite connect, but um, not particularly phased. He still makes the attack with full temi. Okay, he's still attacking with full spirit, uh, regardless of whether the strike is successful or not. It's unsuccessful, so he uh, goes to Tsubazeriai and then retreats out to the uh, cutting distance and follows with a, a good men's strike. Let's have a look at that one. Um, a little bit because what you'll see here and this is this is a theme now from fourth dan all the way up um is about the uh initiative or sen yeah we'll see that from the sort of far distance here he starts to apply some semi by moving his sword and he starts to move forward before his opponent is able to react and his opponent is unable to respond really and, and receives this this uh, men strike his men is in good form from good distance um with kentai no ichi uh, and it is a good you call that otsu okay with good zanshin okay after striking he turns to make sure that he keeps his eyes on his opponent as much as he can he's not going off into the distance turning his back to them here yeah, the connection is not broken between the two of them Keep a solid connection. Now he makes an unsuccessful attack here, uh, an unsuccessful attempt at Ojuaza, right? Yeah? That's okay. All of your attacks don't need to be successful, right? If we watch that again, he's gone for this sort of um, Kaishido, it looks like. Um, and his opponent, and I think this is what this is one of the difference we'll see here between the successful candidate and the unsuccessful candidate. Um, if we watch it, sort of in slow motion, his 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 opponent isn't really attacking with kentai no ichi. Yeah, her hands are coming up before her body's moving at all. It, it's kind of all disjointed, and that's part of the reason, in a way, that it's all become really sort of. Uh, what do you say, like uh, confined and sort of squashed up so that he's unable to make the sort of waza that he was hoping for. Um, he needed to be a bit further away, apply a little bit more um, semi, I think, uh, to, to, to draw uh, a more committed strike from his opponent, which wasn't quite able to do. Uh, and his, his, his movement's a bit too big. But um, then his opponent tries to retaliate here with a sort of 
odd strike. Again, very disjointed. Uh, no real Kikentai no Ichi. Um, it's just a kind of opportune strike. It's not a, a, an opportunity that, that she's created there. Um, so again, I think that's one of the reasons that she was probably unsuccessful. Certainly from my point of view. So again, we're keeping this constant connection between both participants. This is very important at this level now. Makes an attempt at the Kote. It's not quite quite good enough, but still he, 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 he attacks with Stemi uh, and Zanshin. And another good try for Men. Doesn't quite make contact, so comes to Tsubazeriai. Okay, so throughout that first, uh, first match, it's clear that this candidate was in complete control uh, of the match. He made maybe one, um, possibly two, uh, Yuko Datotsu. He wasn't overly attacking, wasn't attacking that much. Maybe only made six or seven strikes. Um, I didn't count them, but maybe about that. Uh, his opponent, on the other, other hand, she wasn't able to make any uh, real Yuko Datotsu. She wasn't able to create any proper opportunities uh, and was sort of reacting uh, to her partner throughout the encounter. So for me, that's a that's a, a pass for the chap on the right and a uh, a fail, unfortunately, for the the one on the left. Okay, so next one. Okay, okay. So here, right here, our chap on the left here, who was again un unsuccessful, stands up, makes the kakigoye, and then starts to just step in almost sort of randomly here there's no real good reason for this strike this isn't he hasn't sort of applied any semi hasn't taken the initiative um he hasn't really even started to interact with his opponent on the right here and then he makes this quite disjointed men strike again that doesn't really have kikentai no ichi i mean i know he's trying to stamp but it, it, it's not quite right is it yeah and then this kind of, it doesn't seem to have the full commitment to the strike either. But the, his partner, as they turn around here, immediately seizes the opportunity to make a, a men's strike here. It's a good chance, good opportunity here as they turn around after the strike. And we'll, we'll see again in slow motion here. They turn around to I2 Dan. And he starts to step in here, applies semi, takes the sen, yeah, takes that initiative. Takes that initiative. He's clearly got the center and he makes that clear and correct men strike. Good kikentai no ichi um, and clear yuko datotsu. So that's one yuko datotsu for our chap on the right here. Again, our, 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 our chap on the left is, is starting to attack without really having any consideration for their opponent. And this is, I think, the biggest stumbling block at fourth Dan. Lots of, you can get up to Sandan based on your technical ability um, and you don't have to have as much interaction with your opponent. Whereas from fourth Dan and above, it really is about um, creating that opportunity, making a, um, a, a good impression on your opponent and also um taking into consideration the reaction uh, or the um interaction that you're having with that person okay so you don't just okay i want to hit men yeah men okay now i want to hit kote yeah kote you know those the waza selection has to be based on the interactions you're having with your opponent which isn't happening at all here okay the chap um who was unfortunately unsuccessful hasn't been able to do that also if you look as well his feet are flat on the floor Right, so we've got technical issues too, um, but I say technical issues. It's more of a mindset issue as well. That you, you're, you're kind of um, zan shin, which isn't just after a strike. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be there all the time. Is uh, displayed actually through things like this. Okay, so good kote strike as well here. Again, our chap on the, who's now on the left starts starts the encounter here. Yeah, come on, let's do it. Come on, yeah. His partner reacts exactly as he wanted him to, and he makes that good 
they van a cote, they go to strike. Okay, so this is a, a, a technique that our chap on the left has um, has set up, has planned to do, and has created. Yeah, and this is the difference between third down and fourth down. And again, exactly the same situation, really. Um, I think now it's quite obvious that um, our chap who's now on the right is in complete control um, over his opponent and is able to force him into attacking in the ways that he wants him to uh, so that he's able to perform the waza that he wants to perform. So next he wants to perform Nuki Dor. Uh, he knows already from his previous encounter with him that uh, pressure this way will make him think that he's coming for men and he's going to respond, all right? Because look, this isn't how I men or Dabana men doesn't work by just when they when they start to attack, you attack. That's always too late. Okay, so he hasn't taken he hasn't taken the initiative for Dabana men. Um, he's just responding. Oh, he's here, men like that. Um, and our uh, successful candidate here has used that to create this beautiful men nuki door. Like this. Fantastic. See how the difference now, okay? So when this chap here, he starts to, uh, he tries to step in and take the initiative and he won't allow him, his opponent won't allow him to do that. He tries to step in and take the initiative here, but he's not prepared to respond to that, okay? And instead, he doesn't allow, he doesn't get drawn into that trap. Um, it would have been nicer for him to be a little bit more on the ball and be able to perform some kind of orjuaz at this point. But for Yondan, this is this is fine. Um, if you do this for all of the Keiko, though, if you just spend most of the Keiko just defending, um, then that's not good either. You have to actively try to make the uh, make the opportunity to take the Sen yourself. Here he is again. Okay, fine. See how he's starting to fluster now. He's he's very aware, I'm sure, that he hasn't made a valid strike yet. Um, and he's starting to uh, feel the pressure from uh, from our candidate on the left here. He, he starts to make a strike, which is, is very disjointed. Doesn't really have the Kiken Tainoichi. Um, if we watch that, actually. You remember I said about the, the foot being on the floor? See how his, his left foot goes flat on the floor before he um, makes his, his strike? It's impossible to make the Yukol Datota strike from this position. Impossible. Um, so instead, he jumps sort of upwards this way. His, his sort of hands and feet are completely um, all over the place. And his, his foot obviously is not able to um, come up with, behind him either. Yeah. See how he puts that foot down there. You mustn't do that. Okay, so for me, for me, our candidate on the left now, he's started to become a little bit too defensive. I'd like to see him use some more uh, opportunities after um, after the other candidate has uh, made failed strikes or has, has tried to attack at incorrect opportunities. But it's it's not the end of the world. It's still enough for me to um, to, to to give him a pass. I think but I would like to see at least one more. Uh, that odds from him, but we don't unfortunately get that. Okay, so uh, if you know, it, it's fantastic. This this guy did give us a very good example um, of um, a fourth down exam, uh, a successful uh, fourth down exam. At that, um, there are room for there is room for improvement on it. If you ask me, I would like to see more. Um, like I say, opportunities taken uh, rather than just defending. It's okay to defend at points, but a little bit too much towards the end of the cake or. But at the same time, you don't want to just attack randomly um, over and over again. That's kind of what this guy fell into the trap of. Okay, so a uh, great example, though. What I'd really like to sort of point out is, again, this chap on the right here that was successful um, was 39 years old. So his, his opponents also were probably uh, around 40 um, as well. We're not looking at... Uh, young university students or police officers. We're looking at regular people um, that just do Kendall pretty much, uh, you know, as a, as a, you know, extracurricular activity, should we say, outside of their work life, um, maybe just once or twice a week <clears throat> um, for a, a couple of hours a week or something like that. Um, 
so it's kind of com comparable to many of the situations that a lot of us are in. Um, you know, probably these people wouldn't have started Kendo as little, little kids either. It's, it's very similar to the, the situation that most of us outside of Japan are in, I think. Uh, most of the people that start when they're very young and continue all the way through, um, by the time this, this age, we'll be looking at sort of uh, sixth and seventh dan by now. Um, so what I would like you to take away from it really is that these people are in the same category or the comparable category as many of us outside of Japan are. So the chat on the right here, if you are looking at the sort of fourth dan level, um, you need to look at him as a benchmark really as to the standard you need to be at, um, especially if you're a similar sort of age sort of situation. Uh, to him uh, and try not to uh, look to, well, I mean, look at the other two um, applicants uh, as examples of what you need to avoid doing. Okay. So that's it for today. Uh, I hope you found it useful. It was a little bit different because like I say, it's, it, it, it's a grading video. I've done grading videos before. I did a sixth Dan one uh, in the past of a dude doing Jordan. If you haven't seen that, go and see that. It's one of our most popular ones. Um, but I thought it would be very nice uh, to look at this grading because I do indeed get a lot of questions about how to pass uh, third Dan, fourth Dan, fifth Dan, those sort of things. Um, and yeah, I thought it was super relevant. Um, if you liked it, like, share, subscribe, all that sort of thing. Join the Kendo Show Early Access group. Uh, that's where you can post your questions for Kendo Rant. That went up yesterday. This week's episode for Kendo Rant went up yesterday. It was a great episode. We had some great things to talk about. So go and watch that if you haven't seen it already. Um, and don't forget to shop at Kendo Star. See you all next time. Bye-bye.